Well, Australia has taken first place, yet again, for the oldest known asteroid impact on our planet. A new paper published in Nature has found an asteroid impact that occurred 3.47 billion years ago. Three weeks ago, I released a video that discussed the Yarrabubba impact event, which was the oldest known impact site at that time. It is 2.229 billion years old. As you can tell, this new discovery is far older. The site lies in the Pilbara Craton, an ancient piece of Earth's crust famous for harbouring some of the planet's oldest rocks. Specifically, the crater evidence was found in an area called the North Pole Dome, about 40 kilometres west of the town of Marble Bar in the East Pilbara terrain. This region of iron red hills and greenstone belts has long been studied for clues to early Earth, but only recently did scientists realise it held a colossal secret from 3.47 billion years ago. The discovery came when a team from Curtin University was investigating Archean rock layers in the Pilbara. In May of 2021, within just an hour of fieldwork at North Pole Dome, they spotted something extraordinary. Peculiar cone-shaped formations jutting from the ancient metasedimentary rocks. These features, known as shatter cones, immediately raised eyebrows. Shatter cones are a telltale fingerprint of a meteorite impact. They are only known to form under the extreme shock pressures of a cosmic collision. Finding such structures in rocks that were already known to be 3.5 billion years old was a eureka moment for the geologists. It suggested that a major meteorite strike had scarred the Pilbara ground way back in the Paleoarchean era, making this the oldest impact structure ever identified on Earth. Shatter cones are literally rocks shattered into a conical pattern. Imagine the unbelievable pressure wave of an asteroid slamming into Earth. It travels downward and outward through the bedrock, splintering it in a distinctive way. The result is chunks of rock that have striations radiating from a point, often looking like jagged stone ice cream cones or inverted badminton shuttlecocks as one researcher described. The tips of these cones all point toward the impact site, effectively tracing back to ground zero of the blast. At the Pilbara site, the shatter cones were exceptionally well preserved, despite being 3.47 billion years old. They were found in a geologic layer called the Antarctic Creek Member, a part of the Greenstone Succession in the East Pilbara. Geologically, this layer sits beneath unshocked carbonate breaches, which are fragmented cemented rock composed of angular carbonate clasts often formed by impact, faulting, or hydrothermal activity, and ancient pillow lavas, lava that solidified underwater, which helps pin down the exact timing of the impact. Those overlying volcanic and sedimentary layers have been dated to about 3.47 billion years ago, so the impact must have happened just before their deposition. In other words, we have a time capsule of rock surrounding the event. The floor rocks bear the shatter cones, and the ceiling is basalt lava that erupted on the seafloor soon after, sealing in the evidence and marking the impact's age. It's highly likely that this impact caused the eruptions that preceded it to begin. The fact that pillar basalt lavas occurred here after the impact means the area was underwater. This means a mega tsunami would have been generated by the impact. The presence of shatter cones is unequivocal evidence of an ancient impact. This discovery answered a long-standing question. Could any impact craters have survived from Earth's early Archean eon? Until now, the oldest confirmed crater was the 2.23 billion year old Yarrabubba structure, but the Pilbara finding blows past that record by over a billion years, proving that bits of Earth's deep past impact history are still recorded in the rocks. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button, hit the bell icon and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel, and if you enjoy it, consider sharing it around. Shatter cones weren't the only evidence. In the same rock unit, scientists also identified spherules, tiny rounded particles that are relics of vaporized rock. When a meteor hits with enough force, it can instantly melt and vaporize part of the crust. The molten droplets thrown into the air cool and solidify into small glassy beads that rain back down over a wide area. These millimetre scale glass spheres get locked in sediment layers, forming what geologists call spheral beds. Finding a spheral layer alongside shatter cones in Pilbara was essentially a double confirmation of a huge impact event. 
Impact spherules are important because they preserve geochemical clues about the impactor and the explosion. For example, a previous study led had found a 3.46 billion year old spheral layer in the Pilbara Duffer formation, enriched in elements like platinum, nickel, and chromium, a signature of asteroid material. In the new Pilbara crater study, the spherules within the Antarctic Creek member are likewise interpreted as the fallout from a colossal impact around 3.47 billion years ago. Such spheral beds have also been found in South Africa's Barberton Greenstone Belt of similar age, hinting that multiple giant impacts bombarded Earth in that era. Interestingly, having both shatter cones, a proximal on-site indicator, and spherules, usually a more far-traveled ejector indicator, in the same formation suggests at least two facets of the event. It's possible that one extremely large impact created the shatter cones at Pilbara's North Pole Dome and also flung debris globally, producing spheral layers as far away as South Africa. Alternatively, there may have been two separate impacts around a similar time, one that created the local crater and another whose fallout also settled in the Pilbara sediments. Either way, the evidence paints a picture of a planet that was ferociously hammered by extraterrestrial blows in its youth. The impact spherules have been described as globally distributed airfall impact ejector, basically the ash of an earth-changing explosion scattered to the winds. The Pilbara spherules help confirm that the 3.47 billion year old Pilbara event was not a localized fluke, but part of the broader meteoric bombardment Earth endured in the early Archean. But how big was the monster that struck the Pilbara 3.47 billion years ago? The geological clues suggest it was enormous. The energy required to produce a 100-meter crater in ancient hard crust is mind-boggling. From the shatter cone orientations and other modeling, the researchers infer that the meteorite hit at around 36,000 km per hour, about 10 km per second. At that speed, much of the impactor's kinetic energy would have been released as an intense blast wave and heat upon impact. The crater created is estimated to be on the order of 70 to 100 km across, a true gaping wound in the young Earth's surface. For context, the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs 66 million years ago was about 10 to 15 kilometers in diameter and left a 150 kilometer crater in Mexico. So we're dealing with a comparably gigantic impact. The Pilbara impact is described as a major planetary event. It would have shaken the entire planet, unleashing earthquakes so powerful they would exceed magnitude 10 far beyond anything ever recorded in human history. Debris ejected into the sky would have rained down across the globe. In fact, the presence of spherules in the Pilbara and possibly on other continents means material from the blast did spread worldwide. Despite the unimaginable violence of the Pilbara impact, the crater it left behind has long since vanished from the landscape. Over 3.47 billion years, erosion, tectonic activity, and sedimentation have erased any obvious bowl-shaped depression, leaving behind only subtle geological traces of the catastrophe. However, the North Pole Dome, a 40 to 45 km wide geological structure in the East Pilbara terrain, may represent the deeply eroded remnants of the impact central uplift, the rebound of crust that occurs in large impact events. But I decided to do a little digging into using geophysical tools to see if I could come up with anything substantial. I looked at the area 40 kilometers west of Marble Bar, and under magnetics, there is a circular structure where the impact is said to be. Under gravity, the same circular structure with what appears to be a pronounced central uplift dome appears. Along with this, under geological maps, we have ring faults around what I suspect is the central uplift of the impact site. See these radial faults? When an asteroid strikes, it instantly compresses and fractures the crust, forming a transient crater. As the ground rebounds, the crater walls collapse in circular fault zones, creating rings of deformation. Seeing this was very cool and left me astounded. The evidence was always here, it was just waiting for someone with the right knowledge to find it. While the original crater may have spanned over 100 kilometers in diameter, its structural imprint could still be hidden beneath layers of rock. Shatter cones found in the Antarctic Creek member indicate that the current exposed rocks were once part of the crater floor while overlying pillow lavas and carbonate breaches suggest later infilling and resurfacing. Although the exact size of the asteroid is not yet known, we can make an educated guess. Based on crater scaling laws, 
An impactor on the order of several kilometers across, perhaps 10 kilometers, could produce a 100 kilometer diameter, depending on impact angle and the nature of the crust. Some scientists have speculated that impacts in the mid archean could even involve objects tens of kilometers wide. In one documented case, a 25 kilometer impact around 3.46 billion years ago was hypothesized from spheral evidence, which would have left a crater hundreds of kilometers wide. Though this impact is yet to be confirmed, unlike the Pilbara one. So while the Pilbara impact may not have been quite that cataclysmic, it was certainly among the largest known in Earth's history. The world in which this gigantic impact occurred was starkly different from today's Earth. We're in the Paleoarchean, roughly a billion years after the planet formed. Geological studies indicate that around 3.5 to 3.47 billion years ago, Earth's surface may have been dominated by ocean with only a few small proto-continent landmasses poking out. The Pilbara Craton itself was one of those early continental fragments, essentially a cluster of volcanic islands or domes that had solidified out of Earth's primordial crust. This was long before any land plants or even algae. The only life, if present, was microbial. In fact, 3.47 billion years ago is around the time we find the earliest evidence of life on Earth. Fossilized microbial mats, stromatolites, have been discovered in Western Australia, dating to about 3.48 billion years ago. Another geochemical sign suggests life was emerging by 3.5 billion years ago. These primitive life forms lived in the oceans, perhaps around hydrothermal vents or shallow reefs, and were anaerobic, meaning they did not require oxygen. It's sobering to think that while these pioneering microbes were eking out a living, a mountain-sized rock from space suddenly plunged into their world. The impact would have had global consequences, even in an oceanic world. Immediately, it would send towering tsunami waves rippling across the seas. A blinding fireball would heat the sky, and molten rock droplets, the spherules, would rain down far and wide. The explosion would eject millions of tons of pulverized rock and dust into the atmosphere, which would have darkened the skies worldwide. For days, maybe weeks, the sky might have glowed from falling debris, and for years after, a veil of dust could have altered the climate. Earth's surface, largely ocean, might have seen short-term impact winter conditions, cooler temperatures due to the sunlight being blocked by haze, followed by longer-term warming as greenhouse gases like water vapor and carbon dioxide released by the impact circulated. Beyond the immediate cataclysm, a collision of this scale would leave lasting marks on Earth's geology and potentially its atmosphere. The Pilbury impact didn't just punch a hole in the ground, it would have shaken the crust and mantle beneath. Models of large impacts suggest that such events deliver enormous thermal energy to the planet's interior. Upon impact, much of the meteor's kinetic energy is converted to heat, creating a superheated zone in the crust and upper mantle. In the case of the 3.47 billion year impact, the floor of the crater would have been composed of shattered, melted rock, with temperatures soaring for some time after the event. The impact would have also created a substantial hydrothermal system. Once the dust settled, literally, the newly formed crater basin would have been a hotspot, both geologically and figuratively. Seawater, or groundwater, rushing into the deep, hot crater would heat up and circulate, likely forming networks of hot springs. These would be analogous to the hydrothermal pools and vents we see in places like Yellowstone or in mid-ocean ridges, but on a gigantic scale. Such post-impact hot pools could last for thousands of years, leaching minerals from the rocks and creating rich chemical brews. While no specific economic ore deposit has yet been directly tied to the Pilbara impact, geological evidence strongly suggests it could have influenced regional mineralization. Further studies of the carbonate breaches and impact melt rocks could reveal whether the event contributed to gold, nickel, or iron mineralization. Intriguingly, scientists think impact craters can be cozy habitats for microbes once things cool down a bit. Impact craters potentially created environments friendly to microbial life such as hot water pools that could have helped life get started. In the early Archean, life was only microbial, so a crater's aftermath, warm water circling through fractured rocks, bringing up nutrients, might have been an oasis for early life to thrive or even originate. It's possible that not long after the annihilation caused by the Pilbara impact, new communities of microbes moved into the steaming crater walls, feeding off the chemical energy there. 
One intriguing line from a 2021 study says, early bombardment was an important sink of oxygen, implying that life's attempts to oxygenate the air via photosynthesis may have been repeatedly set back by impact after impact. Thankfully for us, the barrage eventually eased off. The Pilbara Crater, being the oldest known, might mark one of the last truly giant hits from the tail end of the late heavy bombardment-like conditions. After about 3.5 billion years, it appears such enormous collisions became less frequent, allowing Earth's surface to calm down a bit and life to gradually expand. Finding a 3.47 billion year old impact structure is like winning the geological lottery. It provides scientists a tangible window into a nearly inaccessible period of Earth's history. For decades, researchers have asked, where are all the Archean craters? We knew from the moon's pockmarked face that Earth must have been struck countless times in its first billion years. Yet almost no craters older than two billion years had ever been found, presumed erased by time and tectonic activity. The Pilbara discovery finally answers that question with a concrete example. It tells us that some traces of those early cataclysms do survive if we know how to recognize them. This crater provides a crucial piece of the puzzle of Earth's impact history and suggests there may be many more ancient craters awaiting discovery. In other words, the early Earth wasn't as completely resurfaced as we thought. The geological record from the Archean Eon can still hold surprises. The discovery is also significant for understanding the early Earth environment and the conditions under which life arose. It's astounding that the Pilbara region, which has given us the earliest microfossils and stromatolites, also yields the oldest meteorite crater. This juxtaposition raises fascinating questions. Did frequent impacts help spark life by providing energy and creating niches like hydrothermal systems? Or did they challenge early life, causing repeated extinctions and setbacks? Perhaps both are true. Such ancient impacts have been largely ignored by geologists until now, but they could hold keys to understanding how early continents formed and how life's earliest habitats were shaped. In summary, the unearthing of the 3.47 billion year old Pilbara Crater is a landmark in geology. It pushes Earth's known impact record over a billion years further back, into a time when our planet was a water-rich but alien planet under a dim young sun. The scientific evidence, shatter cones pointing to a blast epicenter and microscopic spherules sprinkled in ancient sediments, reads like forensic evidence from a primordial crime scene, confirming a colossal asteroid strike. The broader significance reaches just beyond one crater. It opens a new frontier in studying the Hadean and Archean eons. As researchers continue to investigate this site and search for others, we'll learn more about how cataclysms from above help shape the Earth beneath our feet, and how life managed to survive and perhaps even benefit from these fiery trials in our planet's infancy. I hope you found this as interesting as I did. And as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.